I I will tell you how the unit is really working uh, with practical hands-on examples. And uh, TPT is a new thing like uh, Teradata Parallel Transporter. So TPT is actually in going forward. TPT will override some of these functionalities, and we worked on TPT as well in the recent project. So I can give you a better example of TPT as well because uh, on the project we are actually working for the one of the biggest client and they implement everything whatever comes in right so they are the biggest customer for Teradata and it's very costly Teradata tool is very costly only big organizations can use and and provided that if they use biggest uh, bigger data it will be very useful because small organizations don't need Teradata because Teradata if they are using for uh, OLTP system is no of any of I mean it's not a lot of any use like uh, you don't use Teradata for OLTP systems okay because we have plenty of databases available in the market which can do that OLTP for you if you bring Teradata and you are only doing an insert update or daily transaction data nothing will happen like uh, you will be waste of money because Teradata is very costly so you have to decide when you need Teradata basically Teradata will be useful for the banks most of the biggest organization healthcare and you know investment banking these people will use Teradata okay yeah these are the utilities in Teradata that we are going to cover all the application utilities and uh, uh, yep do we need to get a separate license for all these utilities or it will come with the Teradata license itself? Yeah, it will be coming with the Teradata license only. Thing is, uh, normally we won't get the software, you know, outside like if you can download software from, you know, Google. Teradata, you can install a client from, you know, Teradata site itself. But server, we have to install on the VMware and all the stuff. So basically, whenever you buy a uh, Teradata license for a machine, right, it will be provided mm -hmm. with all the utilities as well. You know, I mean, the real-time projects like company, if they buy, they buy a Teradata license, they can get all these utilities. But that, you don't need to worry about those utilities because that will be taken care of by your company and your administrator. So you, as a developer, you should know how to use these utilities and work on a Teradata. But in, I mean, if you want to know in general, yeah, that is fine. The utility yeah, should be coming uh, along. Just asking in general. Yeah, yeah, that is fine. Because uh, the, that will be coming under most of the admin parts because those utilities, without that utilities, there is no point of paying Teradata, basically. Because okay. Teradata, if you only do it for SQL, you can do it for any, with any other database. The utilities okay. are the important ones for Teradata. Yeah, uh, no, I just was thinking of uh, in Informatica for the separate tools, we should be having a uh, license, oh, yeah. license, right? So maybe I thought the same way. No, Teradata itself is the costliest tool, and they don't give these utilities the like. I mean, they will give that. Okay. It is a package, like I mean, it depends on the size of the database that you want, like uh, how many gigabytes, how many terabytes of data you need. So they will only buy the data space, like based on the space of the data, then they will you know sell the product. Utility will be remain same. Like for example, I'm expecting 100 uh, teradata, terabytes of data for my project, right? So mm -hmm. they will, you know, configure according to that. So the teradata mm -hmm. team will give you the server number of servers. You have to buy those servers. So they will configure that corresponding database size based on the project. Mm -hmm. And if you have, you know, increasing business, they can add additional servers to that to increase the space. Basically, space is the main thing for teradata, right? So we have to buy the space. So whenever you run some query, for example, normally what happens in real time is uh, we have database administrator, right? So you're running some query in Informatica with Teradata, and your query is the spool space. There's a concept called spool space. Spool is nothing but the temporary space when you run the query. So the spool sometimes what happens? The spool space error will come. Spool space error is nothing but it's saying that out of spool space. So, for example, you have allocated 2 GB of spool space for your user ID and you are running some, you know, like crack query saying the cell star from table name. Okay. It has huge millions of rows and you don't have any indexes on where you said some uh, address name is equal to, let's say, New York. So, normally address name don't have indexes or primary indexes because that is a non-unique, you know, key column, right? Address name is not a unique column. 
So mm -hmm. I mean something like that you have written a very bad query. Uh, even when you join two tables, you don't give a proper join which are already having indexes or not. Let's say that. So you're running the query and you're not able to get the data. It's taking time. And finally, after five minutes, it will say that uh, uh, Teradata utility exited with this error, a spool space error. So you get this query to your DBA and say that I'm getting a spool space error for my ID. So they will just analyze the query, what actually you wrote, first of all. So if you if they think that your query is okay and you can get the data, but thing is your user ID doesn't have that enough space, right? So they will add the space to your user ID. That's what happens in any database. but that spool space can be expanded actually I mean when you need some more spool space to your ID they will check first like what is the need that how many queries you are writing or something like that they will do the analysis and they will assign you some spool space in real time in real time environment so in similar way like the space can be increased for a database if they need more space to handle the data something like that Okay, those are the utilities I mean that we are going to discuss about in the class, and uh, this is like additional things like the real-time analysis. Anyways, we'll be covering the beta scripts and software installation. Yeah, yes, we'll do. We'll do help with uh, the software for the students, and uh, because the Teradata software is not available online, because it is available, but that is. Uh, VMware image like you have to install VMware and then VMware on the VMware you have to install Teradata. If you really want to install from Teradata website. I have a question here. Can we yes. install uh, VMware on hard disk or uh, do we, I mean do you help us in installing in a hard disk? Uh, yeah I mean actually I have a software I mean I have a server with me. So maybe what I will do is I can share the details of server. Maybe you can install the client on your machine, and you can access the server. I mean, I mean at least for during the course, and later you can install the software between like once you install the VMware and you can put the image in that, and you can install that software. I can help you with that as well, VMware. On a hard disk, right? I mean, separate portable hard disk. Do you mean? Or, uh, uh, no, on your Windows machine, right? Directly, you are using Windows Seven. Yes. Yeah, we can install on VMware on Windows as well, right? So the VMware will be fine, and whatever the image that will be coming there, that will be a Linux uh, thing, basically. Okay. So whatever the pro version that we are available in Teradata, it's like a command line operation. So uh, once you install the VMware, you can have this image onto that VMware, and you can install Teradata from there. Okay, so it will be the client will be installed on our machine, and the server uh, we are going to access your uh, server. Yeah, for now, what I'm thinking, like I mean, uh, it is uh, two ways. Like actually, we can have VMware installed, and we can get the VMware copy from Teradata website. That is another way. Otherwise, we can have the client installed on your machine, and I can provide you server details to log into that. But the server details, like, would be. Uh, for up to for limited time because that is like a license server, okay? Because uh, the queries that we are going to per perform on the server, right? It will impact the performance of the server. So maybe we can do in either way. Like I mean, for the starting initially, if you are actually ramping up the, with the process, if you need the access immediately, then we can provide the server details to you, and you can install the client. It will not take much time. Otherwise, you can I can give you the VMware copy. And the image as well on your system, and you can install the total software. We have two ways to install the software. Okay. So we'll do that in the I mean the first uh, one or two classes or. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean before after finishing the introduction and basic about Teradata, then before starting the hands-on, we need the software to be ready on your machine because this is not a theoretical class. We need the hands-on, right? So as I said in the class, after the class, you can practice the corresponding utilities, and you can come up with any doubts in the next class. Okay, that will be good. So that is what actually the training for, because this is intended for more of uh, real-time, you know, users like experienced persons. Okay. So. And the additional help, like the resume preparation, all you guys already know that right? this is actually. Uh, the additional help for the student, they don't know how to prepare the resume for Teradata profile. We can help with the resume preparation. So if you are already working with some profile, 
you must have the resume already with you. You can add the Teradata skills and you can write up on the Teradata utilities. That is fine. Okay. Alright, and any questions so far? Uh, I'm going to... Uh, yeah, that is... Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, tell me, sir. Yeah, uh, I just uh, remember that you were telling that there is a no concept of primary key in the Teradata. Yes. When we say that it is an RDBMS, mm -hmm. then how we will tell that it, is, it doesn't have any primary key because we should be having a relationship between the tables, right? Yeah, that's all. I mean, that's a good question. Basically, primary key is here. Is a primary key concept is there, but they don't call it as a primary key. They call it as a primary index. So the primary index will also do the same thing. Primary index is again, if you compare with Oracle, it will be a primary key only. But in Teradata, they call it as a primary index. So the primary index can be two types, like unique primary index and non-unique primary index. So in Oracle, what happens? Uh, primary index don't allow null values, right? Yeah. Primary key. But here we have an option when you define the primary key as non-unique primary key, mm -hmm. then you can allow duplicates in that. Okay. So I mean, it's like how we design the primary indexes. When we distribute the data, right, it will be depends on your primary index. So I will tell you how the data is distributed in Teradata. That is more important to know how the data will be distributed among different AMPs. AMPs is nothing but access module processor. That is a processing unit in Teradata. So the data, when you say select a from table, it will divide that operation because as per the Teradata architecture, it is no shared architecture. Nothing but the resource won't be shared among themselves during the execution of the query. It will be distributed among the different AMPs and the data will be fetched from the corresponding AMPs to fetch the data. So I will tell you, I mean, uh, the process in the process, how the data will be shared through the AMPs and how the primary indexes can be designed. Because the primary index can be defined on the multiple columns. Like if you combination of two to three columns, that is like composite key, you can say in Oracle, composite primary key, like on three or four columns, if you define the yeah primary index, nothing can be null out of those four columns, right? Similar okay. to that, and you can define non-unique as well. I mean, if you want to be insert the null values, something like that, you can use, I mean, in, not null values, sorry. Null values can't be inserted in the primary index. It's a new, unique or non-unique, okay? Remember this. Only thing is, you, can't ins you can insert duplicates if you use non-unique primary index. The, because in the database that is required, right? because you have the data uh, with different, the same customer with different information, right? then you, you should have this primary, non-unique primary index for the corresponding ID because otherwise it will not enter the same data with the same column, right? So that's why you have to define non-unique primary index over there. In data warehouse, that you don't need to explicitly use a sequence generator and all the stuff like you if you do in Oracle or any other database. In Informatica, you do the sequence generator, right, for generating the surrogate keys, the natural keys, I mean to say. Yeah. So that will be, you know, override by this concept. Okay. That answers your question, are you okay? Yeah. You have any question? I mean, that you can, I mean, going forward, like, once you go into the detail, that you'll be understanding, like, what is the concept, like, how the data will be, you know, based and distributed among different AMPs available in data. Okay. Okay, I mean, once we complete this, I mean, training, I, I'm sure, like, you'll be confident at least with the basic utilities and the programming with Teradata, at least up to some extent, because once you get into real-time, because the real-time will be little different. I mean, if you know the fundamental strong, right, you can write any code, it's not a big deal. I mean, you have already experienced some basic Tera SQL, right? So it is yeah. like more of SQL only. Even in BTEC and fast load, the, it will be in SQL only, but the syntax will be a little different for how to invoke the utility as such. Okay. So you guys are familiar with Unix as well? A bit? Yeah. Because uh, most of the time we write uh, Unix commands like when you're using the BTEC or all. I mean, it's not a Unix command as such, but BTEC script normally call in Informatica or like from the Unix scripts. So they write some BTEC.insert.sh and they write the cell script first and then they invoke the beta script in, inside that. So something like that. 
But if you know the BTEC, it will be easy to put into the cell strip. It's not a big deal. Okay. What's the major difference between uh, major difference between the ETL and Terra data? Uh, ETL and Terra data. ETL is nothing but you know extraction transformation loading into your database. Right? Terra data yeah. is a database. Database. So ETL tool is nothing but Informatica is an ETL tool. And Teradata is a database. Teradata is not an ETL tool, right? It's a database. Okay. You got, got it, right? ETL is nothing but uh, as part of business intelligence, right? BI. ETL is part of that. So we are extracting the data from database, and we transform the data. Yeah, we transform the data with transformations and some business logic, and we load the data into again database. So Teradata is a typical database, but there are utilities to pull the data in different ways. That's it. It's a simple database. It's not a ETL tool. Okay, just to, to be clear on that, ETL tools are Informatica or Abinitio. Those are ETL tools. Those are called ETL. ETL will do the transformation as well, right? In Teradata also we can do the transformation of data, but that is at the uh, row level, right? But when you do the Informatica transformation, that will be different operations. We are doing on the data with the different aggregations and all, with respect to flat files as well. Because the Terra data we can't handle the flat files, right? It's a table and column information. Relation database will have only the relation between the tables, right? It's not a flat file oriented. Informatica can handle the flat file information and also write something in the logic and then it will modify and load into the database. So and end of the day, we need all the data into the database. That is the purpose of it. So, I mean, if you're using Teradata as your source, and we're pulling the data there, the utilities will come into picture, like uh, the fast export and all, to fetch the data faster. And if your target is also Teradata, then you can load by using different utilities uh, into the Teradata. Okay. Right? 